Hey everyone, welcome to another Godot tutorial. So today we're going to be looking at Godot loops and how you can use GDScript to do very different types of loops in Godot and then you can maybe make your scripts a little bit more versatile using some of these techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a new Godot project and I'm just going to call it Godot loop tutorial. And we'll just create the folder and create an edit. So we're going to keep this very simple. We're not going to actually create a scene. So we'll just create a 2D scene to keep it simple. And then we'll write some code. So for this, I'm going to add a script. And we'll just create it as that and get rid of all these comments to simplify. So now just to start off with the most basic type of loop you can do, uh, for loops and Basically, you can uh, do something like this. So in range 20. So basically, it will then uh, take this and generate a range between 0 and 20, like this. And then it will loop through this range and assign this number. So let me show you how that works. So once we go over here and just print out this number and save it off and run it. Just select the node 2D scene. And you'll see down here that it actually prints out from zero up until 19. So it's minus the number that's in your range over here. So this isn't basically saying that it is zero up until 20. It's uh, just 20 numbers starting from zero. So that's an in range, very simple. What you can do then uh, next, you could start at a particular number like 10 and we run that again and then you'll see what it does. So it starts at 10, ends at 19. So that's another way of just being able to start at a different number in a for loop range. And then let's look at some other things that you might need to know. So one of the things you might need to know is what continue does. So when working with loops, I'm just going to use this as an example. And uh, we'll say if the number is equal to 15, we want to continue. And then below that, we want to print the number. And let's see what this does. So it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and it skips 15 and goes to 16, 17, 18, and 19. So what continue does basically is uh, this current loop that it's in. So when it hits this condition, it will then skip over that loop and not do what is below this continue. So that's how you can control loops and skip over certain parts of uh, data in your loop or variables. So you can use a continue for that. I just want to show you something else. If you use a break and you hit play, it'll have a very different effect. So it will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then once it hits 15, it'll break and not do this print. So break will basically jump out of the loop completely and then it'll just stop and stop looping. So break is useful sometimes when you just need to uh, loop up until a certain point and then stop. Next, let's look at how we can do stepping in uh, loops. So just do a step. And what this means is you can, instead of incrementing by one between 10 and 20, you can actually increment by another number. So let's uh, choose two over here. And then let's just take this out so that we just have a print and then you can see what it does. So refresh that and it's 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So it's incrementing by two. If we change this to three, you'll see the same sort of thing pattern emerge. And then let's see, it's going to be 10, 13, 16, and 19. So pretty simple, pretty simple. Let's uh, do something else. Let's uh, try and loop backwards. So what you can do is you can put 20 here and you can loop down to zero and you can decrement the step by two and then you'll see that will loop in reverse. So 20, 18, 16, 14, etc. 
So some other things you can do uh, with loops and uh, different data types. Uh, so for example, a, a string basically is an array of characters. So you can do something like this. You could say for C is in, uh, let's make a string called generalist programmer. And then we just print out C. You can see it's going to loop through each of these characters and print it out. So that's pretty cool, right? So you could actually then do some string manipulation using loops as well, or whatever you want to do. You could reverse your uh, string. You can do whatever you need to do. Next thing we want to look at is using uh, different types of arrays and dictionaries and then printing them out. So let's look at an array example. So basically in Python and I think in GDScript as well, it's not called an array, it's a uh, list, but basically the end of the day arrays and lists uh, between uh, C-based languages and Python and GDScript are basically the same thing. So if we look at this one where we have different types of variables, so it's an integer, a string, and then let's just make it another integer. And then let's just leave it the way it is and print it out. So then you can actually loop over this array. You'll see a 10 hello minus 10. So that's very nice, right? Let's look at if we had to make it a dictionary instead. So let's just create a basic dictionary here. Let's say name is GP for generalist programmer, age, let's make it an integer value of 50, and then let's just say skill is GDScript. GDScript, just gonna be a string. And let's run that and see what the output is. So now I'll see you get the keys of this different uh, elements in our dictionary. So what you could also do is you could also then uh, probably do something like uh, this. You could get age and then you could make it another string, character string loop. You could get the uh, values like this and then you could print out the values. So let's uh, just try that again. So now you'll see GP50 GD script. So what else you can do is you can uh, do while loops. So you could do while, uh, let's just say i is less than 10 and print i and here we'll just have to increment i. So i equals i plus one and let's just set i equal to zero here. Let's save that. And uh, we just need to give it uh, a var and then refresh or run that again. So now you'll see it can loop from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up until just before 10 because it's less than. If we did an equal to, it will loop all the way to 10. So you'll see that works. And once again, the same rule applies if you use a continue or a break. So let's say if it is equal to eight, then break out. You can also do a break in a while loop and hit play. And you'll see that at just before eight, it breaks out and doesn't do this print. Again, you can do a continue here to skip over. So all the same rules apply as with the for loop. Okay. Let's have a look, continue. Yes, uh, the issue is that we are not uh, adding to the loop. So you have to add, otherwise it's just never going to skip over that. And then you'll just see zero, well, one, two, three, four, five, and then misses eight and carries on printing. So guys, basically that's a introduction and beginner's tutorial into how you can use loops within GDScript and Godot engine. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you can get notifications of all new videos.
Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.